seems that it would be easier to attack one demon at a time, right? And if you're smoking weed and, you're, and, and alcohol, choose one. Choose one that you know, okay, I could live without this first. I could live without this first. And that way you could chop that one head, head off of that double-headed dragon. And then you can consolidate your your energy consolidates your focus. You can consolidate your power. God can consolidate his, his, his graces through you to eliminate the other. I think you could have the will to, to at least remove one, but here's what happens when you start chopping those heads off those dragons. You start to recognize that that dragon had more than one head, had more than two head. It has like, four heads, five heads. And then you start being, you, because you clear up your vision, you clear up all the cloudiness, you start to see all the other areas that you were addicted. And you start to recognize that it's not even the weed that I was addicted to. It's not even the alcohol I was addicted to. It's my character. It's who I am and I'm an addicted person. And I'm addicted to women. I'm addicted to porn. I'm addicted to the phone. I'm addicted to food. And so what begins happening as you start to recognize your old self, a new self is being born in you. Yo, Elliot. The one problem that troubles my mind for a long time is how to get over addictions, right? I'm not too proud to admit I'm addicted to weed and alcohol, and I learned to function with it for about six years now. This may be my biggest challenge on my road to becoming a king or the strongest version of myself for that matter. So what is good inspiration and determination to get rid of these habits? Man, six years of living with weed and alcohol on your breath and on your mind builds quite a stronghold. This is the thing with addictions. They, the, the longer you've had them, the more they sink their teeth into you and the heart the harder is going to be to rip them out and so you got to be mindful of that and you got to be mindful of the fact that this stronghold you know i called it i love that word stronghold right because it has a it has a strong hold on you sometimes the hold is so strong that you're too weak to beat it and i know that was the case for me i was smoking weed it wasn't alcohol for me you know, it was weed. I was smoking weed. It started at age 35. <laughs> Who started smoking weed at age 35? Me. So I smoking weed at age 35. And for until I was, you know, 40, five years, five years, smoking a lot of weed. And I, and I every time I try to quit, I'll go back. And I thought that I could quit. I thought I could will myself because I got a strong will. And I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. And that's when I had to broke, break down. And it was the first time I actually humbled myself to God. This is how I became Christian. I don't know if you heard the story, but I became a Christian because I wasn't strong enough. <laughs> I wasn't strong enough to free myself from the stronghold. And I had to ask the Lord. And I have had, I have heard that, you know, if you humble yourself before the Lord, all things are possible. All things are possible through Christ that strengthens me. And I've heard that and I believed it in my head, but I never practiced it because I was like, I can do it. I can do it. Old prideful E. I can do it. I've got a strong will. I got willpower. I'm a strong man. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't break the stronghold. And so I asked God to take it away from me. And you know what? He took it away from me. He took it away from me. And, and it wasn't hard. I thought it was going to be hard. And you know why it was hard? Because I was trying to do it by my own effort. But when I let go, and here's what I said to God. I said, I am not going to stop smoking weed. I said, I, I've tried and I can't, I'm not strong enough. And I even said this, I'm gonna smoke tomorrow. I'm gonna smoke tomorrow. I'm not gonna stop you. I'm begging you to take it away from me. And he took it away from me. And I say that to you because the first thing that's required is humility. The first thing that's required, and you know, you're humbling yourself by coming to me, you're saying, you know, I'm not proud to admit, but I'm addicted. That's, that's humility, that's good. That's a good start. You're coming to me. Now, go to God. Go to God in your conception of God, whatever it is. Higher power, universe, Allah, Jesus Christ. I'm not telling you what to choose. I'm just telling you 
that it can't be you. You can't be your own God. And most of us, including myself, try to be our own God. And I'm not strong enough to do what God can do. So ask God to take it away from you and have faith that he will, because he will. God will take it away from you. All things are possible. And so that's the first thing. That's the first thing. The second thing I would, I would offer to you is this, that on a practical note, meaning like, what can you do? What can you start to do? On a practical note, it, it seems that it would be easier to attack one demon at a time, right? And if you're smoking weed and, you're, and alcohol, choose one. Choose one that you know, okay, I could live without this first. I could live without this first. And that way you could chop that one head, head off of that double-headed dragon. And then you can consolidate your, your energy, consolidate your focus, you can consolidate your power. God can consolidate his, his, his graces through you to eliminate the other. I think you could have the will to, to at least remove one. But here's what happens when you start chopping those heads off those dragons. You start to recognize that that dragon had more than one head, had more than two head. It has like four heads, five heads. And then you start being, you, because you clear up your vision, you clear up all the cloudiness, you start to see all the other areas that you were addicted. And you start to recognize that it's not even the weed that I was addicted to. It's not even the alcohol I was addicted to. It's my character. It's who I am. And I'm an addicted person. And I'm addicted to women. I'm addicted to porn. I'm addicted to the phone. I'm addicted to food. And so what begins happening as you start to recognize your old self, a new self is being born in you. A new self that doesn't need those things, but you got to give it time is another thing that I discovered. I thought that God was just going to transform me overnight and I was going to stop sinning. But it took time because I couldn't see most of the sins because I had been blind so much by weed, pride, other sins. So sins are like layers. They're like layers of sins and you can't. And once you eliminate one layer, then you start seeing the ones you couldn't even see. And then another, another layer is eliminated. So you're about to go on a journey, bro. You're about to go on a magnificent journey of discovery as well as reconstruction. Your whole life is going to change. Man, my whole life started changing. I was asleep for five years smoking weed. And then, you know, because nature abhors a vacuum. After weed, I did, it was then other things. I started picking up other things, little stupid habits, like to, to, to fill that hole. And so I started to recognize that it's not, it are, it's not even these substances, it's me that God's working on. And it was a process and it took some time. So be patient with yourself. Be patient with yourself. I mentioned last week that, you know, we were talking about sex addiction, but like I said, nature abhors a vacuum. And that's why even in the 12-step programs, right? Some people denigrate the 12-step programs, but they do great things for people. One of the first steps in the 12-step in the program is to acknowledge your sins, repent, right? It's not even a Christian organization. It's not. But they say you have to repent for your sins and you have to ask God for help. If the 12-step program has been around for decades and has, and has tremendous success, says those two things which are biblical and they work for those people in a secular way, you know it's got to be scientific. In fact, it is scientific. There's a book called The Power of Habits. I read it or listened to it on Audible maybe 10 years ago, a while ago. Power of Habits. And uh, in The Power of Habits, he talks about why scientifically the 12-step program works. Right? It's based on principle. So that's it. That's 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 what I offer you on that, man. I know you can do it. You know you can do it. You need some help. And it's not gonna, you're not gonna get help from methadone. You're not gonna get help from nicotine patches. You're gonna get help from above, divine support, divine support. Ask God to help you. And the reason why that helps, part of the reason why it helps, part of the reason why it helps is because of humility. 
and humble yourself and say, Lord, I can't do it. I can't do it. And I want to do it. And you have to have a big enough reason why. Why do you want to do it? Why do you want to quit? Right? Why do you want to quit? You got to ask yourself why? What is this about? I was so frustrated with myself. I see you, Robin. Okay, cool. Ask for help from higher consciousness. Have a personal relationship with that higher consciousness and believe that it loves you. That it loves you and it wants the best for you. Right? And what was I going to say? Anyway, so I, I think you can do it. I think, it, I think it'll work out for you. Don't give up. That's the other thing too, man. Don't give up. Don't backslide. Have a strong enough why. And you're going to be all right. Your life, man, it's going to be amazing. Your life is going to be so different. Your life is going to be so new. Because right now, it's like you're walking around with a wet towel on your head over your eyes. You're walking around like these people who have the masks on <laughs> and they can't breathe. Imagine how their life is going to be again when they could take off the mask and they can't breathe. I was, I was reading this one article about how people are suffering from all kinds of uh, uh, respiratory issues. Like people are dying because of the masks because they're breathing in their own carbon dioxide, they're breathing in their own germs. You're walking around with like a, a mask on or like I use that word towel over your head because it's kind of like in a fog, like a wet fogginess. And when you take that towel off, when you take that mask off, all of a sudden, life turns bright. I, one of the things that started to fill the void for me, and it was a bad habit I got into during COVID was I started drinking wine. And it wasn't even like an everyday thing. Actually, during COVID, it almost became every day. And then I caught it. I was like, okay, just weekends. But even just weekends, and I didn't realize this until I stopped. Even just stopping drinking wine on the weekends, right? Because I, I, con I convinced myself that it's okay. It's just Friday and Saturday. You don't have a couple glasses of wine with my wife. But I decided a few weeks ago, no, I'm done. I'm none. I'm, I'm not going to be dependent on nothing. I'm not taking nothing. My productivity, my sensitivity, my liveliness, my focus, my enthusiasm has gone through the roof, bro. It's gone through the roof. I'm a different man. I'm a totally different man. You might not be able to tell, but I can tell. I know myself. Your life will never be the same. It's totally worth it. You get to be yourself again. And at first, I know it's hard because you come to know yourself as high and drunk and you think you can't be any other way. And then you, I, I remember I, I thought I was going to have anxiety and social anxiety and I would like, I would be angry because I'd be like, what am I going to do if I go out with my quote unquote friends? Well, you know what you discover about your quote unquote friends? That if you can't enjoy yourself around them without being drunk or high, then you really didn't want to be around them anyway. <laughs> so I'm not around anybody. I don't drink, I don't smoke. And guess what? I don't be around anybody because I realize I don't want to be around them. So you get to be yourself and you get to be okay with being yourself. It's amazing. And I think you're going to love it. So go for it, brother. Do it. Keep me posted. Let me know how things unfold for you, dude. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. You I'm going to see there's a new challenge uh, for me, so uh, you'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. Ask for help and go little by little. All right. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulse here, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation coaching students where among many things we get together about four or five hours a week where we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives in fitness business and with women and if you want to join a like-minded group of men that get together every day to grow stronger in every way during this degenerate age it's real simple just follow me on instagram and then dm me the word king k-i-n-g and then me or one of my teammates will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I really hope to see you perhaps at our next live call. Done.